and local authorities in the West African country of Sierra Leone have initiated measures to promote clean cooking solution with a view to mitigate challenges faced by women cooking with open fire. Like in many African countries, Sierra Leone women also faced compounding challenges while cooking, especially with open fire, thus the need to create alternative for them to help cope with risk involved. About 90% of the West African population reported relied on f firewood for cooking, but the women in, the, in Sierra Leone are working with stakeholders to change the narratives. Let's have more details of that in this report. This is how Doris Levy starts her day at the Milti Magai School for the Blind. Like many women in Sierra Leone, cooking over an open fire is a deadly routine that comes with challenges. The smoke from the wood we use affects us badly. It disrupts our sleep, reduces our blood oxygen levels, makes our heads spin and darkens our eyes. These are the challenges we face in the kitchen. Finding alternative sources of fuel would greatly benefit us as the smoke lingers in our chests. For many, like Levy, cooking has become a daily struggle. With the many challenges faced by women cooking with open fire, there have been calls for urgent actions to be taken into transitioning into cleaner and energy efficient methods. In 2019, Margaret Yenkin Mansare established Women in Energy Sierra Leone, a social enterprise spurred into action by the story of a young girl raped in the process of fetching firewood for cooking. So you not having access to clean cooking does not only affect women and girls economically, but in terms of their social being. For instance, the girl was, that was being raped, um, some of them, in worst case um, scenarios, some of them might end up being pregnant or some of them might end up being forced to early marriage. In an exclusive interview with CGTN, the CEO of the Clean Cooking Alliance, Difna van der Lans, says her organization is trying to figure out ways to support the transition for institutions in Sierra Leone towards clean cooking solutions. I think increasingly what we're hoping to see is that governments, policymakers, um, people who are like funding some of these projects start thinking about clean cooking as part of the bigger energy transition planning. And so if you really, really take a step back and think holistically around energy planning within a country like Sierra Leone, within cities, within communities, within institutional cooking within households, it has to be part of all the integrated energy planning. Over the last two decades, Dr. Kande Kole Yumkela has been working on energy efficiency projects. He now heads the presidential initiative on climate change, renewable energy and food security. So this is the beginning of the discussion. Already we have a commitment that by June we'll have an action plan. Um, and then we're trying to bring also together financing. This is also linked to the president's flagship of Feed Sierra Leone, which is the, the program to ensure food security. But most of the processing of agricultural products after the farm is done by women. And most of that is done with firewood and charcoal. Okay. So we, if we don't introduce clean energy solutions in that process, even the food security program uh, would not be achieved. Yumkela for the states that 90% of the West African country's population depends on charcoal and firewood for cooking. Statistics from the Clean Cooking Alliance show 2.4 billion people around the world depend on food cooked over polluting open fires or inefficient stoves.